Hey everyone, I've been getting some requests for more procedural HDRI tutorials, so this will be the first of three. They are all going to be night sky themed, and this one is going to be about making nebulas or nebulae. The other two night sky tutorials will be coming soon, but if you just can't wait, you can pick them up on Gumroad for a dollar. The node setups will be packaged neatly, so you can just plug them in and go. Link is in the description. Okay, let's get started. So here we are in Blender 2.82. Um, I just have a simple scene set up with a few different objects of different materials just to display the way the HDRI interacts with them. So I'm just going to switch over to the shading tab over here. Okay, so make sure you're in render mode. We're using Eevee for this. And also make sure use nodes is checked off up here. The first thing we're going to do is make the stars. And we're going to do this a little differently this time. Last time we used uh, Voronoi, and this time we're going to use Musgrave just to try something a little different. So let's get our Musgrave texture in here. I'm going to press Control T on that. Uh, with If you have Node Wrangler, it adds the texture coordinate and mapping. Um, and then we can just plug this in here to see what we have. And so with Musgrave, if you turn the dimension all the way down and the detail all the way up, you get this really fine detail like scatter look. It's kind of freaking out on my computer right now. So basically what we're going to do is just going to turn the, the detail down a little and the dimension up slightly. And I'm going to add a math node set to greater than. And that makes these hard edges. Turn the detail down to about 6 or 7. And you're just going to play with this until you get the, the look that you like. That looks pretty good. And if you want to add uh, a second layer of stars, you can duplicate that math node and set it to add. We're basically just going to make uh, this setup twice right here. Plug that vector in and uh, plug the second one in. If you set this to clamp, it basically just adds the two textures together. So you can take the second one, scale it up, get a little more detail. All right, so after messing around, these are the values I came up with. I just clamped the, both of the greater thans. So now that we have the stars, we can get working on our nebula. The first thing I'm going to do is add a noise texture and uh, another mapping node. I'm just going to plug these in. And the way we're going to connect these to the stars and the nebula is with a mix RGB. You want to use a mix RGB instead of like an add node because we're going to be using color for the nebula. And if you use a, an add math node, it's going to be black and white. So we're just going to plug both of these in here. And we're going to set this to add. And then turn the factor all the way up. And that'll add the two together. To make it easier to visualize, I'm going to control shift click on the noise texture here, and that way we'll only be seeing that. Okay, so next I'm going to add a map range node. And this is a trick that I do in a few of my tutorials where you add a value and a math node set to add. And you plug these into the from min and from max. And it's basically like using a color ramp. Except with this setup over here, it's like moving both of these flags together. So, so basically what we're doing is we're taking the noise texture and we're moving the blacks and whites closer together to make harder edges. And basically what we're looking at here is um, the white sections are going to be our nebulas. So I'm just going to make this a little bigger over here. I'm going to set it to 2 for now. And the value will change how much black and white and this add will change how hard the edges are like that. I'm going to also set this to smoother step just to make the transition more gradual. So just play around with these values until you get something that you like for how bright it is. And we can always mess with this later. OK, and that looks that looks all right for now. And next, we're going to uh, add another noise texture. So I'm just going to duplicate that and place it here and plug that into the texture coordinate. And basically, what we're going to use this for is to control the rotation. It adds some uh, distortion. and if we just plug it straight in there, you'll see it gets um, pretty crazy pretty fast. And so to control that, you can add a math node in here. Set to multiply. And so if this is set to 0, um, it's basically like having all of these values set to 0. And if you set it to 1, it's like having all of the values set to this noise texture. 
So you can use this as like a sliding scale. So we're just going to mess with these values until we get something we like over here. I'm going to turn the detail all the way up and mess with the scale a little. And you can see it's looking a little cloudy over here. There, that should be good. So now these look like, you know, crazy space clouds, basically. And the way we're going to affect the color is, once again, with another mix RGB. Um, basically, we're going to be using this as our mask, where uh, the colored parts will be white and the black will be black. So we can plug this into the fa factor right here. Turn the first one to black, so that makes the, our sky black. And the second one is going to be whatever color we set it to. And because I don't want it to just be one color, I'm actually going to make another noise texture. And the cool thing about noise textures is it comes with this uh, color slot right here. And when we preview it, you can see that it actually makes some color. And that's also being distorted by this, except we're able to play with the scale. So if you want more colors, you just turn it up. If you want fewer, you, you know, turn it down like that. We're just going to take this color and plug it into the white slot over here. And then we're going to preview that to see how it looks. Might actually want to turn that up a little. And then we can just plug this mix RGB into this uh, add over here and see how that looks with all the stars. I think maybe the edges are a little too crisp. So we're just going to mess around with some of the values here. Um, maybe bring this further apart. If you want more, you crank this up all the way, but that's, you know, a little overkill. So 0.5. I think 0.5 is good. Another thing you can do is um, add uh, math nodes to make the stars brighter. So we can uh, set this to multiply. So if you wanted the stars brighter, you, you could just uh, this math node. So you can see they start to bloom pretty crazy. And this is good for uh, adjusting the influence it has on your scene. And we can also do the same thing with the nebulas. The only thing is you just want to make sure not to put it in front of the, the color or else it turns black and white again, as you can see here. So we're just going to move that over here. And if you crank that up, you can see it's uh, messing with the brightness of our scene. You have these nebulas floating around. If you want it to be a little more distorted, you can just crank this up a little too. But I think it was good the way we had it. So after messing with the colors a little, the clamping right here, this is the outcome that we have. And that's it for this one. These nebulae are definitely stylized. They're not quite like the ones you can make with volumetrics, but I think they're really good for using as a backdrop or just to make your reflections a little more complex. The next tutorial will be making the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. And that one will be animated, as well as a third one where we make a spiral galaxy. So subscribe so you don't miss those next ones. And if you don't want to wait for those, or if you don't want to make them, uh, you can get them over on my Gumroad now. The link is in the description. And I'll be trying to put more stuff in the shop over there. So if there's anything you'd like to download, comment below, and I'll consider putting it over there. I hope you all learned something. Thanks for watching.